This is a beautiful tank. Yeah. Yes. Woo, looking wow. good. Fish wow. know it's time that they are That's a good thing to, to start on, actually. Yeah. Looks gorgeous. Great. Look at that tusk, man. Look at you guys. Hey. hey! Waterbox Wednesday, welcome. Yes, welcome, everybody. So we are live on Facebook and YouTube. Yep, so share the stream. The beautiful tank, real quick. Share the stream, like, comment. Um, we'll be reading comments throughout the show. And today we're going to talk about feeding your fish, mm -hmm. different types of food. Um, you know what the nutritional needs of different types of fi fish are. You know different types of forms of food, techniques, all that good stuff. Yeah, you know what's funny about feeding your fish is not a lot of. Uh, uh, there's not a lot of discussion about that. Not really. It's something that we get a lot of questions about. It's a very basic about. topic, but a lot of people may not fully understand. Um, where's that audio coming from? Oh, it's coming from here. <laughs> we have a speaker that's playing. All right, playing so we're this. going to <laughs> get right to it. Let's do this. And we're back. Where are we, Jess? We I have, promise I've... we're going to get this together eventually. Um, I think that like month off of doing these lives is just really... Yes. Worked. It was like a... Yeah, just we hadn't taken a break from it in like a year. And then, and then, then like we took about a month weeks. off, yep. so it's a little bit of an adjustment. It's all good. All good. We are here to drop some knowledge about some fish food and feeding your fish. So um, like you're saying, it's a very kind of basic topic, but a lot of people don't know a lot of the information. They have a lot of questions about, well, what should I feed? How much should I feed right. them? Um, and I'm sure opinions will vary quite a bit, but we're going to go based upon what we do here, what I've done in my many years of keeping fish and running stores yep. and stuff, um, and show you actually what we, what products we use here at the uh, Waterbox headquarters. Love it. Love it. So we will be doing questions. We, If you have any questions when you're doing it, um, definitely ask away. One of the number one things is uh, the types of food that are out there. So your main things you have are going to be like your frozen food, you've got pellets, and then you've got flake food. So we're actually showing some of the ones that we use. Oh. So for like frozen food, um, got oh, just throwing stuff around. Uh, so this is oh, that way. Ooh, that way. <laughs> Mice so, and shrimp, that's a real popular and shrimp. Um, Yeah, it's a real, it's one of your backbones to your frozen meaty products for antheas, things like that. Um, frozen food is also going to be the most nutritious uh, type of food that you can do with your fish. Right. It's the closest to their natural diet. Mm -hmm. um, it's come a long way. So anytime you can, frozen food is going to be more nutritious. Um, a lot of nice varieties. There's tons of different types of food out there um, and for frozen varieties. And then you also have pellets yeah um pellets everyone are, has pellets everyone has pellets they're like the kind of a staple and yeah. they're great if you have you know just a few minutes to feed the fish you want just something simple um for that time but if you can do frozen food it's going to be a better option then followed by pellets as probably a next best um choice frozen and, has always been a challenge for me because it does require more time so like you got to take it out of the freezer you got to defrost and everything but mm -hmm. the, the nutritional value is much higher so it's it's always good if you can go with the frozen and maybe supplement with the Yeah, the we do that, I mean we do that around here where most of the time we try and be frozen, but sometimes at the end of the day we're gonna do an extra feeding, we just throw some pellets at them. Um, just because it <laughs> I, don't, I mean I just like chuck them at them. Um, <laughs> we violently throw the pellets at the fish. Um, the water blocks it though, so they don't get hit by it. <laughs> So pellets have come a long way. I remember like 15 years ago, pellets were like really just, I don't know where to center, there we go. Um, pellets used to be like not good nutrition at all. And they've come a long way. A lot of them are like softer pellets. They're not as processed, there's not as many fillers. But pellets, because they have fillers in there to make them as a bound up product, they do create more waste product overall. Yeah. So. And the Nios foods are great. Yeah, and these are like salt, like almost like a soft feeling type of pellet, mm -hmm. and there's some varieties. So, you know, as long as you're picking a good pellet, you're gonna nutritional wise do pretty well for your fish. Yeah. 
And then some people may swear by it, but then there's flakes. And yes, they're the, they're the flakes. The, they're the bo- I mean, <laughs> I guess for fresh water, like a freshwater tank, it wouldn't be as as bad. But like when we're talking salt water, um, flakes just so processed, tons of fillers. There's not much nutritional value. Right. Um, very dirty. Your water quality is going to go down pretty quickly with uh, flakes because there's not much that the fish is actually keeping. It's all either coming out of its waste from them or like sucking into your overflow and going into your filter yeah, and never actually getting to eaten. Get the, yeah, to get the food to the actual fish. I do see a lot of people use it in freshwater mm-hmm. because they have so many community fish. Yeah. Um, but in saltwater, they have a little bit more strict dietary requirements. They do. And so the water quality requirements yeah. too. So yeah. you don't need it being dirty up as much. And even like our freshwater tanks here, I make sure we are sure we feed the pellet too because it's just a lot cleaner and better for the fish overall. And then, of course, you've got like... Um, Freeze-dried food, you know, seaweed sheets. I'm going to show you in a little bit, um, and then there's even l- some live food. So some other categories that are less commonly used or discussed, I would say. Yeah, and live foods. I mean, that's that's a pretty cool one, but you got to go to your local fish store typically to get those. Yeah, I'm just talking live brine. There's saltwater yeah. ghost shrimp, the regular ghost shrimp. Um, so and then you know, in the saltwater world and freshwater, there's a ton of other live feeders and stuff like that. But um, when it comes to saltwater. Those are not as commonly used for like live food or freeze dried. Yep. So. So let's talk about. Uh, I'm gonna jump around here. Let's talk about uh, how much to feed the fish. That's a that's a very common question, and I was when I first got into the hobby, I was just feeding like crazy. Yeah. Because you know? like, that's How'd that that's go? one of the How'd best. That go? Not very well. Because <laughs> one of the uh, funnest things about having a tank with these kinds of fish in it is feeding them. People love feeding the fish. So it's easy to overfeed. It is extremely easy to overfeed. Um, when it comes to feeding fish, and um, this is one thing I came, I've come across and all the time that I've done it, is people having a hard time keeping their water quality good, um, you know, and just lots of algae problems, you know, water changes, never keep my tank clean enough. And it almost always goes back to overfeeding. And people are like, what, my fish always look hungry. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> don't fall for it. It's a complete lie from your fish. And it really comes down to once a day is plenty for most fish. Um, I mean, a lot of them you can probably even do every other day. But let's say once a day as a good general rule. And honestly, food should be gone in like a minute. And I'm being pretty generous with that amount of time frame. Yeah. Um, if you think about kind of, and it's not an exact thing, but think about if you're feeding your fish, they can really just need to eat the, whatever their size of their eyeball or two times their eyeball size is. So it's not that much. Right, at it's all. tiny stomachs. Right, so you know they'll continue to eat neat, but in a captive world, their environment, they're getting fed every day. They're not having to really search for food. They don't need to be like just completely overwhelmed with food all the time. Right. So once a day, minute or less, you know, a few bites per fish, and then you know some fish like you know our tusk in the tank or whatever because he's a big carnivore. It's a little bit different of a rule because he's going to get bigger chunks of food. Right. Um, but you know if you're feeding and two, three minutes go by and there's still food floating around the tank, there's food making it to the bottom of your tank, you're probably overfeeding and you're probably your water quality is not uh, <laughs> not happy about it too much. But that's really for that. Um, <clears throat> and then they, um, like for tangs and stuff like that, they get sea veggies, like seaweed mm-hmm. clip. And Show them this beautiful seaweed clip that we have. I cleaned it. I cleaned oh, it. Yes, no. I did. I read. Uh, I read. It doesn't look I, that much better. It, <laughs> well, I don't know. It's quite a bit better. Okay. <laughs> so um, the other one that we talked about was um, seaweed sheets. So this is like your nori seaweed. It's pressed into sheets. Um, we even have a link on the ones that we use. And this is a big sheet. So it's going to last you a while, these packs of them. Jess, we actually have this in the kitchen for us to eat as well. <clears throat> I don't eat it. It's gross. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> it's salted with sesame oil, so it's, you know, delicious. Yeah, yeah, this is the non-processed, non-salty <laughs> sodium laden version for your fish. Um, <laughs> you could take some and make sushi if you really wanted to. But this, like, with this one here, even with our big, we have four, four or five tanks in that the front tank, and mm-hmm. still something about, like, this size was, what, not even half of a sheet. And we take it and we fold it up. Now, every morning, these guys get the sea veggie clip. And this is the one that you guys are talking about. This looked way worse <laughs> about 15 minutes <laughs> yeah, ago. Because this thing sits in the tank for a, lo- a lot. Yeah, so. so this one actually came out um, of our tank mm, just earlier today. And I cleaned it up. 
So this is actually um, a magnet one. So this is really nice because you don't have to stick your hand in the water up at the top of the glass, snap together around the glass and you can kind of drag it around wherever you want. This is the mega one because we mm. do have big old fish and that glass on the Pro 220 that three is- quarter inch Starfire glass. Is very, yeah. very, very thick. Yeah. Um, so you need a strong <laughs> magnet. They make a regular one and there's also like suction clip ones. Um, I want to know too real quick guys that all these little gadgets that Jess is walking you through, we did post links to, in the, uh, the description so you can go find those easily. Yeah, so we're just showing what we actually use here. There's a ton of products that, you know, are similar to so do the same thing. Mm -hmm. These are the ones we use here. So for this, sea veggie just goes into the clip. And then um, one trick that I found out when you have big old tangs or a tusk loves to come and rip this off of the clip <laughs> is I actually shred it a little bit because it's still at the bottom. Oh, so you got all the little and, tricks. And yeah, so you do this and the fish has to rip off pieces instead of ripping you know, the, the whole sheet thing and running around the whole freaking fish tank yeah. with a big chunk of algae in his mouth. Which um, Mango does quite often too. She's Mango a very violent too. eater. She is, yeah. she is. Um, and tangs get really aggressive with their seaweed. So we do this every morning. And if you have tangs or anything, you wanna put something like this in every single morning for them to graze on and then feed regular food at nighttime. So. Love it. That is for that. And then got types of fish. So depending on your type of fish, yeah. what you want to feed them. Um, and you've got three main categories, just kind of with any animals. You've got herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Um, they're herbivores, tangs, box face, rabbit fish. They're really just strict herbivores. Yeah. Um, they so will be eat eating lots of that. <clears throat> lots, lots of greens. Seaweed. And then <clears throat> we even do, like here, this is a frozen um, cube. And this is algae based. So emerald entree, there's formula two. There's quite a few of them out there and it's just vegetable cubes um, <clears throat> that we do at nighttime with their feeding too. What's if, interesting is a lot of people wouldn't, especially getting into the hobby, realize that you're gonna need, you know, the herbivore, the omnivore stuff, mm -hmm. the al all these different foods based yeah. on the type of fish that are in your tank because it's a community tank. Not all, all of them eat the same thing. And if they don't get the right diet, they're not gonna be very happy. Right, like your your tangs, you could go and feed them meat every single day if you didn't really know that they needed a lot of you know vegetable matter, um, and they would eat it. They'd eat meat every day, all day, yeah. and then eventually it would cause health problems for them. They would die prematurely, stunted growth, stuff like that. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's not like they're not gonna take whatever you feed them, right. but you just need to focus the fact that they have to get the algae, um, mm -hmm. and the vegetables and Especially the tangs because they're grazers. Typically on a reef, they're gonna be eating all day long, grazing on the rocks. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so make sure they get plenty of veggies. And um, then you've got like your carnivores, which a lot of times you don't see like big carnivores in a reef, but we've got our tusk. And then also other ones that you're gonna probably see in a reef tank are your wrasses. Um, you've got um, all the fairy wrasses, flasher wrasses, those kind are going to be pretty much meat eaters. So they need the food like the mysis shrimp. Mm -hmm. And then we've got like our bigger fish, that tusk, e eels, groupers, things like that that we had in Eel Island. And they need like krill, silver sides, that bigger meat eater stuff. Yeah. If you haven't seen Eel Island, we have a playlist there on YouTube. You can go check it out. There's some awesome fish in that thing. Yes. That was a fun build. So. Yes, it was. And then you got carnivores. They eat a little bit of everything. I mean, omnivores. They're happy with whatever you give them. So you can see our big, beautiful tusk in there, flat across the front. He came from Eel Island. Yep. Um, did you talk about target feeding? So, no. Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit. But we do have a tool that's pretty cool for that. And there's there's a number of different ways to do it. You could use the Kent Marine Sea Squirt, mm -hmm. or you could use like a turkey baster. Yeah. So I don't um, know if you're showing that while we're out there. I have there. them. I have a whole bunch of little things under here. Ooh. I know. We're getting all fancy with our keyboard. <laughs> So this is the um, Kent Marine Sea Squirt. And the cool thing about this one is, good shot. Um, uh, there we go, okay. So it is like a fancy turkey baster. So you can take up like liquid coral food and stuff in it um, just by using this. And it actually has little measurements on here. So you can use it to feed coral. But also it has a little stabby stick that kind of pokes out. And you can use this for feeding eels and anyone that has Ooh. like a little bit meatier food. So it kind of doubles as both a, a um, coral feeder product. and also something that you can use to like target feed. So this is a pretty cool, um, and it's nice and long. So you're able to actually like get to the bottom if right. you have eels 
or you know <clears throat> anyone who's not coming out with a main fish and need to get right. fed or to spot feeding your coral. That's a pretty cool product. And again, you guys, we've linked all of these in the description if you want to check them out. Um, really whole, good tools to have yeah. on hand. Basic old turkey baster, get it from your grocery store. You'll love it. It's great. Mm -hmm. I did yeah. not link that one. You didn't want to link to a no. turkey baster. You can go to the grocery $2 store. $2 <laughs> grocery store. Um, this is good for feeding your fish, but also like blowing off your rocks and just like all kinds of uses in an aquarium. So just get a turkey baster. You'll use it. Yep. Um, sea squirt's going to be a little bit more high functioning. You're not going to want to use that stuff. one again, though, like during Thanksgiving or something, right? I mean, if you really want to save money, <laughs> you could just wash it and use it once a year in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a little sketchy. But I think we should. <laughs> Yeah, buy a new one. Okay. Um, should we go feed our fish? Yes, yes. Let's. Do you guys want us to feed the fish or do you just right, want so us to talk you can all see. day? <laughs> Maybe we'll just sit here and talk yeah. all day. I don't know. Um, so I have made up two cups of food. So this is just the mysis shrimp. Um, and you can see the water is pretty cloudy whenever you defrost this. So you can definitely pour out a lot of the extra water. And there are also food strainers and stuff out there mm -hmm. that people use. Um, and it does equal less, like, nutrients and phosphates in your water if you do kind of empty out that extra food um, water. And then here's going to be a mix of, I, it doesn't show very well. Ah, okay. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Um, krill and then it's some of the, I know, and then some <laughs> of the algae diet. Mm. So Yummy. we're going to go see everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. Fish food. It's a fun topic. We're keeping it interesting. Devin Rich says nom nom nom. Nom nom. That's right. Delicious. We got uh, lots of people here with us Evan, Emily, Ricky, Beverly, Jessica, Timothy. Jessica. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I said that like I didn't know how to pronounce Jessica. it. Jessica. As if there aren't two people named Jessica that work here. What does that say? That was complicated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put just to show. <clears throat> Here's our sea veggie. Love the magnet. Look at that. It goes right in. And it's somewhat, even with the aggressiveness of the tusk and the uh, blonde naso, see how the shreds kind of rip off and they're not running around with the whole piece? So it does actually help quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> and then if you have like tangs and stuff in here, always feed the algae part of the diet first. And it's kind of just mixed in with the krill, just a one stop. And you'll see our tang will happily go and eat some krill. Yep. Um, but if her diet was based upon that, she would not be a very healthy and she would not be as old as she is. So it is very, very important. Get your tangs, rabbit fish, angels, that kind of stuff. Get a good amount of algae in their diet. Which the tusk is too busy chewing on algae to carry about his krill. So I'm just these, this one breaks up. There's some uh, other cubes for the algae that actually you can, uh, they stay in bigger chunks but really any of it work. If you guys have any questions, post them in the comments below. We'll try to get to them. Um, share the stream. We're live on both Facebook and YouTube every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern. All right, so we're gonna let them kind of clean that up. I'm draining the mice out a little bit of the excess water, just to keep it a little bit cleaner. We'll make sure everyone gets their algae. And then for like your antheus, wrasses, you know, a meaty diet like mysis is really important. And in kind of conjunction with that once a day feeding thing, some antheus and new fish actually might need twice a day for a little bit when they're acclimating. But for the most part, once a day is a pretty good average. If you guys haven't seen our uh, 220 gallon dream build, we do have that <clears throat> uh, posted on YouTube so you can check it out. That's this tank right here has been set up a little over a year. It's gotta be um, a year and a couple of months now at least. Yeah, You're getting I think close so. to um, so we a lot of uh, corals in here, and this is our, so th again, this is our 220.6 plus edition. Um, it's our largest production tank that's about six feet long by two, 26 inches deep, 24 inches tall. It's a beauty. Yes. So you can see everyone's happy and we're chasing around the food. Um, and that's really it. Yep. And that's it, Jess, just like that. That's, that's you're done feeding. Walk a away. lot of people would sit here for another 25 minutes dumping food into the <laughs> tank. But you this know, one looks and then, hungry. This one and didn't then they're come like, why today. do I have diatom algae? Why do I have green algae all over my tank? I can't figure it out. And it's like, well, it's because you just dumped four gallons of frozen fish food into your tank. Yeah, as I always used to tell people, I was like, food in equals poop out. And, you know, <laughs> you're going to. 
<laughs> man down. <laughs> man. All right, Rich almost went to the ground. <laughs> it's tricky the, back here. Good thing that camera wasn't on. <laughs> Alrighty. Everyone looks happy. So, no one knows I have a step stool back here. <laughs> yes, no one knows that Jess is being propped up. I'm a little too tall for the camera. It's all good. I'm too short. <laughs> um, yeah, so I always tell people, more food you're putting in there, the more waste that's coming out of your fish, waste equals nitrates, algae, that kind of stuff. So really yep. keep that in mind. It's fun to feed your fish. You can probably sit there for two hours and entertain yourself by feeding your fish, but mm. it's not going to do you any good. All those fish are perfectly happy and healthy. They get fed every single day. They're doing better than if they were in the wild. <laughs> Look at the size of that elegant squirrel. I know. And they're, they're even actually kind of closing down for the night because it's around the time that the light starts to go yeah. out. Um, you know, a lot of people don't t know too, and I just want to bring it up because we've had it so long. I've had that naso tank since 2007. Yeah. These fish live a long time in captivity. They do, and they're meant to. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so fish are not fish are not supposed to only last a year or two. I mean, their right. lifespan's really long. Tangs easily in their 20s. You know, there's clownfish that are 30, 40 years out there. Um, there's you know, a clownfish here local that is how old? Um, that one is, it's in its 40s. Wow, it's see, a 40-year-old clownfish. Yeah, so think about that. I mean, and, I mean, I know this tangs. This is a zombie clownfish. <laughs> <laughs> I know that tangs possible? that are like 22 years old. So, I mean, it's insane wow. to think about that. They're, they're meant to live that long, yeah. um, you know, and it's our job, nutritional-wise, with food and good water quality to do so. But yes. So if you want to learn how to properly feed your fish, you watch Waterbox Live and... I'll we'll help you walk through it. All good. <laughs> all good. <laughs> are we missing anything, Jess? Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> we're just, all right, we're just going to yeah. queue. We're going to tank. We're going to talk. Um, <laughs> Me and Jess are just going to mute our mics. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, a lot of times people will hear, you know, target feeding, broadcast feeding, you know, spot feeding. Um, you hear those words a lot with coral, but it also pertains to fish. So <clears throat> most of your fish, just what we did there was just broadcast feed. It's putting the food in there, fish are getting what they can, they're fending for themselves, everyone's getting pretty much their fair share. Now on occasion, you may have to do some target feeding. So when we had Eel Island, we had to target feed the eels. We yep. had to put the food right to them and specifically feed each of those. Um, we also had like a grouper and a trigger that were kind of shy, so we'd have to bring food to yeah. them. Everyone else just broadcast fed. Now in like a reef tank, you may end up having to do um, target feeding for new fish right? or some like really shy fish um, because a lot of times some fish just can't get into the hustle and bustle. Right. That's happening They're not at feeding time. To get in there They're and get scared. The food, yeah. All the, you know, 20 fish around them are going crazy for feeding time. Um, so if you do have a shy or new fish that just doesn't really come out, you may want to use something like a sea squirt or a turkey baster and blow some food in their direction, other, you know, somewhere else in the tank, until they get used to it. And then um, one thing we saw this the other day, and I didn't see him when we were feeding, but our mandarin that's in there. And this is um, one of the really beautiful blue, red mandarins was eating pellet food. Wow. So it was one of those that evenings, it's toward the end of the day, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna give, throw some pellets in here because I did not have frozen food ready. And I sat and watched for a second and the mandarin came over to the pellets that landed on the ground and was just chomping that's down. That's so awesome because naturally that, that's a relatively difficult fish to keep. You need a pretty mature system mm -hmm. to keep them. Um, you know, they prefer live things like copepods running around the tank. So yes. having them eating pellets, that's awesome. Yeah, so they're one of those fish that are very hard to maintain because of the dietary needs. And for him to be eating pellets, it helps us know that he's going to long-term be sustainable um, and, you know, exist in this aquarium and that we can kind of spot feed and bump his nutrition up with those Lucas pellets. Lucas is asking, not, he's not asking us to shave our heads this time. Well, at but least he let that one go. He is asking... <laughs> Uh, do you suggest breaking those feedings into multiple feedings during the day, like instead of one bigger one, maybe multiple times? Um, not really, because if you go and say, I'm going to do two or three small feedings per day, I guarantee you're going to end up feeding more than we just did in a quick 30 second to one minute feeding. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you do really small feedings, your dominant fish are going to always get to eat and not necessarily some of your maybe less, uh, less dominating fish. So, you know, put in just enough food for a couple of fish to eat and the rest don't get it. Mm -hmm. So I think you, unless it is you have um, like antheas or um, really sensitive fairy wrasses, 
where their metabolism is so high that they do need multiple feelings per day. But that would be okay. probably the only reason. You were dropping knowledge, Jess. I got a lot of fish stuff in this head. Like, <laughs> it's just there. <laughs> Far more than me. Uh, someone asked about the harlequin tusk in a reef tank. Question mark. You know, they're wondering, is, is that common? That harlequin actually came from Eel Island. Yeah, so um, a lot of fish that are not considered reef safe are not labeled that because they eat coral. It's because they would eat invertebrates, um, shrimp, really tiny fish maybe. Mm -hmm. But a harlequin tusk, seriously, they're like big babies. They're really <laughs> actually sweet. Um, I haven't really met one yeah, that's ever been a problem mean, in a tank. But they look pretty menacing, especially with those big teeth sticking uh -huh. out. But, uh, they're actually really docile. It's we one even of my have, fish. yeah, we even have um, at least two cleaner shrimp in there. One cleaner, one blood. And I was pretty sure when we put him in there that he might actually go and eat them. And they are still existing, and he could care less. But he's fed every day. He's like, oh, I don't have to go hunt anything. Right. He's right. just chilling. He's like, all right, they're gonna feed me. I'm good. So that's considered not invert safe, I would guess, but it is safe for corals. Alrighty. Ricky Davis says, wow. Wow. That is a beautiful tank. That's pretty. Um, yeah. And one other thing is, um, if you go out of town, like if you're leaving your tank, what mm. do you do? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kind of in a goofy mood I'm today. Kind of, <laughs> I'm trying to bring you into this. It's not going well. <laughs> All right, Rich, what do you do Sorry. if you are out of town for your fish tank? Automatic fish feeder? Yeah! You know, that, in, re, in re, relation to feeding, I would use an auto fish feeder. And that's a period when they may not get uh, frozen. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. It's just a little bit of time. Yeah. What about you? What would you do? <laughs> <laughs> if you can't bribe somebody to come and feed your fish for you, um, which, okay, if A, you're lucky enough to have someone who can come and actually feed your fish while you're out of town, pre-bag your food per the day and actually label it because they are gonna come in there and I've heard horror stories about this and I've dealt with this, is they're like, but your fish kept looking hungry and they went through two weeks worth of food in three days because the fish kept looking hungry, you come home to a tank that's crashing. Oh my God. So I always said, pre-bag your food, put it in the freezer, label yeah. the date, say don't touch anything beyond this, it keeps your tank safe. That's a now, great if you idea. can't have somebody come over, um, an automatic feeder. <clears throat> it's really your only other way. Even and those scare me, but yeah, they work pretty well. They do. So they are not like an instant, I'm putting it on, leaving the next day, mm -hmm. everything's going to be great. So if you don't usually feed pellets, train your fish to eat pellets beforehand. Otherwise, right. they're going to look at this foreign food that you're dumping in here while you're gone, and it's just going to all go to waste in your tank. So make sure that, A, they'll eat the pellets. Um, and then set up that feeder so you can test run it for a couple days before you actually leave and let it run. Because the way they like turn and spin, like, it can dump a whole bunch of food in at one time. You could have a huge amount of pellets just dumped into your tank while you're gone, and they're just like rotting yeah, and everywhere. That's... So test run it, make sure your fish will eat the pellets, but the auto feeders do work well for that. Um, the Eheim one that we put in the link, I've used that one, it's probably one of the more reliable yeah, ones. Yeah, I've used that one too. Um, it's digital, it's a really a good reliable one that doesn't seem to kind of just like yeah. turn a couple extra times a good company and too, stuff like so, that. You know, they make pretty reliable stuff. That, that auto feeder has been around for probably two decades. Yeah, it was always a preferred one that I use, so I, I trust that one pretty well, but. Um, and what, do you, what would you say, Jess, if you can't, you don't have an auto feeder, you're leaving town, you don't have anybody to feed the fish, how long could you safely say, well, the fish just aren't gonna get fed? Um. <laughs> Is it two days? Like, what's the max amount of time <clears throat> that you really wanna be able, you could do something like it? Because I'm sure that happens. I'm, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, and some people may not like necessarily my answer, but um, feed them really, really well before you go. Mm -hmm. And I mean, honestly, you could probably be gone for a week. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, it's not good. Um, but, you know, and some fish like antheas. Antheas are just super high metabolism. Some wrasses are too. They're not going to fare well to that. If you've got really hardy fish, feed them really, really good before you go, I'm sure you probably get away with like a week. Um, but honestly, just go buy an auto feeder. I am, you know, Amazon can deliver it next day. So. Yeah, that's true. You got Amazon, um, just hop on there. You're gonna have it the next day. Yeah, but I mean, fish can go a lot longer than people think without food. And um, you know, I don't, I don't advise a week. But I'm saying, if I had to truly say Worst how long case you can scenario, stretch it, you know, realistically, you feed them a I'd little bit before. Three to five days is the max that you would yeah. want to do it, and that's still not desirable. But Lucas B said that he never suggested we shave our head. 
I must be mistaking him Another for somebody Luke. else. <laughs> There's an imposter Lucas who really wants us to shave our heads. So. Um, Devin says that you bribe Jess to tank sit is what yes, you do. Yeah, she takes it here. So. <laughs> yeah, so like our tanks go every week, every weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And a lot of times if mm -hmm. it's a holiday, it'll go three days and they don't get fed. Jess has a very high fine. hourly rate though, so. <laughs> Fly me out and <laughs> I, I still have to do my job here, so I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> Depends. <laughs> Um, so again, guys, if you have questions, post them below. We can always answer them after the stream. Um, it was good. We're obviously really goofy today. I'm yes. talking about fish food, so yes. that's pretty good. <laughs> um, and for now, and we'll see everyone again next Wednesday. Yep. Like, subscribe, uh, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and we will see you next Wednesday. See ya.